I'm Marvin Doyle, I'm an assistant professor at the University of Rochester. Been here since 2008, and I run the Parametric Imaging Laboratory. We mainly focus in on cardiovascular applications, and, and, and we're trying to do this in two ways. One way is to do with high frequency, uh, more intravascular, so it's basically trying to detect vulnerable plaques. And then another application we're doing is to do it more um, um, on an external type of vascular application. So we're targeting the carotid artery, and one of my graduate students has been developing the techniques that would allow us to, to characterize plaques in the carotid artery. And the motivation for that, we think that as a screening tool, that would be a more viable approach than the intravascular route. My interest is as an engineer is like, okay, we create tools and we can spend a lot of time working out how to optimize the tool more and more. But I think the real power comes when you use those tools and try to help the biologists. And I think molecular imaging is a nice area for that. I think, um, especially, you know, you can do molecular imaging with PET, you know, everybody knows that, or MR, but it would be nice to do the same thing with, 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 with ultrasound. And I think that's a nice area, and that's, you know, kind of where my interest is with um, cancer. We spent the last four years doing predominantly phantoms, um, simulation, trying to optimize code. And we think the technique is ready now to go to an animal model, and we have a clinical partner at the hospital, um, Giovanni Scavito, and we'll be targeting patients for that. So what we're going to try to do to see how well does the technique, we know, we know how to do it in the lab, now the next problem, what we're going to try to resolve now is how to do it in the clinical setting. In order to prepare yourself better to deal with the patient, the intermediate is the animals. And the animals allow you, in a lot of cases, for example, for the cardiovascular application, unless you know what is exactly in the disease, then you'll create an image, but you can't really say with any high degree of certainty whether your image is really a true reflection of the disease state. Now, the animals allow you to do that. You can create this model. Sometimes the model is not right. Sometimes the model is over maybe too optimistic, but at least it gives you a better feel of how confident you are in your imaging techniques before you go to patients. And I think that, to me, that's a critical step that any imaging modality, especially young imaging modality, must go through. You know, you can get these great images within the lab, within synthetic materials, but the real question is when you go to the clinical case, how much confidence do you have in your system? I think the animals provide that information. The thing that we would draw me to the ultrasound system is that, okay, you get the RF, but you can do so much more, right? So for example, again, the carotid elastography project is a classic example of where we can, you know, where we've utilized that, um, that feature where we have programmed different beam forming techniques, we have used the DAC to collect the type of data we want, which traditionally we could not do with a traditional ultrasound system. So that was just the standard RP alone that's enabled us to move forward in that. Most of us are engineers, and we have no expertise in animal um, anatomy. If you look on the breast, for example, you can go and you know you can go to Amazon and buy a book and the ultrasound atlas of the breast, it'd be nice to have something like that for different animals. So at least when you're imaging, you can use that as a way of training your grad students, training different people as you move from, as you translate it from the lab to the animals, to the clinic. I think there's two problems which, which I mean, we're all trying to solve. I mean, one problem is detecting these plaques, vulnerable plaques, and so these are the plaques that will rupture and cause heart attack and all those, not, you know, all those horrible effects. And probably, uh, and also, you know, if you can detect these plaques, you can reduce costs in terms of how much it costs to uh, manage these patients. So that's one aspect. But another aspect which I'm finding quite fascinating is all these cardiovascular risk factors. And um, you know, if, if, you, if you can identify patients who have these risk factors, then you can tailor make the treatment regimen a, regimen a little bit better and again, reduce costs. So I think from an imaging perspective, we're gonna try to see if there is some physical parameter. For us, we think it's stiffness, arterial stiffness, which will help us to see 
are how different cardiovascular factors impact that and use that as a way to decide whether or not to change a particular treatment regime or to intervene much more earlier.